Hello everyone, how you doing? And a happy new year to all of you. This is the first video for 2023. First video of the new year. And boy, <laughs> we're starting this year with a bang. Um, on New Year, I'll, I'll let you know, I live in Northern California. On New Year's Eve, we got hit with the worst rain storm that caused the levee to break uh, 30 miles from here and our interstate was underwater <laughs> so we had to close the freeway in both directions because it's all farmland in that area 30 miles from here and when a levee broke just a rush of water went over the freeway trapping cars that were dumb enough to try to drive through standing water and got stuck and had to some people had to be rescued from their cars by helicopter that's how bad it got here and the wind was insane 55 mile per hour wind bursts that just went on all night this is new year's eve night of new year's eve and uh, we lost power here for 15 hours <laughs> so we brought in the new year in a cold dark house freezing our asses off <laughs> boy that's that's how we kicked in the new year <laughs> so i wasn't needless to say i wasn't spending any vinyl can't do that with, like without electricity so it feels good to have power again. So I thought while the power is still on, why not film a video? <laughs> so uh, here we are, uh, first vinyl dig for the year. And, but I want to start off by showing uh, my top three albums uh, from last year, from 2022. This is in no particular order. Uh, it's not, you know, top favorite to least favorite. And no order whatsoever. Here are three records that I enjoyed the most last year. And I think some of you already know what it is without even me showing these records. But for shits and giggles, let's just show it. <laughs> the Tipping Point from Tears for Fears. I absolutely loved this album. It was so good. This album is so good from start to finish. I love every track on this record, even the really slow, mellow ones. And beautiful album. And I saw Tears for Fears in concert this past summer uh, with Garbage opening. That was the best concert I went to all summer, all year. It is my top concert of the year that I went to. And uh, Tears for Fears sounded great. Uh, like I said, I love the whole album, but the one track that stands out the most for me is um, uh, "River of Mer Rivers of Mercy." Uh, that I love it on the album, but to hear it live really moved me. It was probably my favorite song they did out of their en entire amazing set of back-to-back -back amazing songs, but that one really stood out. It's still my favorite song to listen to on this album, though I like a lot of songs like. Um, my Demons, Break the Man, um, Master Plan uh, the, are amongst my favorites, but Rivers of Mercy, nothing's topping that. <laughs> nothing's topping that. It's like such a, an amazing, amazing album, uh, song and an amazing album. All right, and next one is uh, Porcupine Tree, Closure, Continuum. And... This comes in a very close number two for the best concert I went to last year. Saw them uh, at the end of summer, I believe it was September when I saw them in San Francisco. And they pulled an evening with, and it was just a great evening of Porcupine Tree music. Uh, very close to being my first concert. The only thing that didn't make it was, it was my third time seeing Porcupine Tree in concert, so... And, you know, it, last summer was my first time seeing Tears for Fears in concert. So that's why Tears for Fears slightly gets the edge over the Porcupine Tree show I went to. But both shows were amazing. Both albums are fucking amazing. This one, uh, just insanely good, <laughs> as you would expect. It, it was so great to have them back. Uh, I really loved that show and such good memories of the concert. 
uh, it was a good combination of the new songs on here plus all the classic Porcupine Tree songs that I would love to hear. Of course, they didn't play every single song I wanted because that would have been like a five to six hour concert. Uh, but what they did play, I really loved. And I was really glad to hear not one song disappointed. There was no bathroom break because I didn't like one particular song. Um, I loved every thing they played that night. Um, like I say, no opening band. It was just Porcupine Tree doing their best. And this album is fantastic. The musicianship is crazy. The drumming by Gavin Harrison is... Um, is... is Leaves me speechless. <laughs> that guy is an incredible, talented drummer. The way he is so creative with just playing, uh, you know, four four time and odd time signatures. He's very creative on how he plays time. Uh, he doesn't just sit in the pocket and hold it down. I and mean, he he expresses himself on that drum set and. The way he expresses himself on that drum set is amazing. It's all over this record, and it was all over the concert when I saw him in San Francisco. Such a joy to listen to this record. Um, I'm still spinning it and just in awe <laughs> of how great it is. Um, it, it, it's great. Um, but my favorite side is side two, Rats Return, and the song Dignity. Those two songs back to back make the whole album for me, though the whole album is fantastic. But those two songs back to back, and side two is my favorite side of this two disc record. Um, just an incredible album. That's all I can say. Just an incredible album. And it was good to have Porcupine Tree back. Uh, I believe that's their last, and there will be no more after that. Everything else will be a reissue. You know, old. Or, you know, old concert recordings released for the first time. That's all we're going to get from Porcupine Tree. I doubt we'll get another new album. Um, but at least we got that one. <laughs> and it was great. All right, closing uh, this off. And I never I can never tell which way is up here. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Um, the new album from Marillion, An Hour Before It's Dark. This is, like the other two, every track is excellent. Every track is excellent. And I even bought this, uh, the Surround Sound Blu-ray uh, for this too, because I had to hear it you know, in, in the Surround. I have a Surround uh, set up in the other room where I'm just surrounded by speakers. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> I love spinning the vinyl too, don't get me wrong. <laughs> um, like I said, I do love every album, but uh, the actual big epic song to close it out, the song Care, which is basically a salute to healthcare workers, or at least towards the end of the song it is, is such a moving song. And it's one of those long, it takes up a whole side of a record to get through it. So I, I guess it's like 15 minutes or whatever. And uh, it does take you on a journey, and it ends so beautifully. Um, it's a beautiful way that they end that song. The lyrics are really inspiring, and um, just uh, inspires me like no other. A great album. I wish they would come to America, Marillion. I really did. Uh, I really do. <laughs> uh, maybe 2024 will be the year they come to America. I sure hope so. I miss seeing them live. It's been a long time since I've seen Marillion live. I've seen him twice, both times in San Francisco. Both shows were, it left me floating on cloud nine, <laughs> cloud nine after the show. <clears throat> they were that good uh, and they're that good live. So anyway, my top three records of the year and uh, there were many more, but those are the ones that stood out to me the most. All right, now new vinyl finds for this year. I finally broke down and bought uh, The Police Greatest Hits, the Half Speed Mastering Edition from Abbey Road. Uh, this is actually a used copy because uh, this retailed for like 50 bucks. Um, on the first vinyl dig I did on New Year's Day, 
I saw this in the used bin uh, for like $35. So I thought, okay, now I'll get it. <laughs> the cheap skate I am. Um, I didn't want to get this at first because I have all the police albums on vinyl. So I wasn't in a big hurry to buy this. I knew it would sound great because I've had records with this um, Abbey Road Half Speed Mastering before this label. Uh, I have a few ABBA records that are done this way and Genesis Seconds Out also done Half Speed Mastering. The, all those records sound fantastic. So does this one. My God. I've never heard these classic police songs sound so amazing. I'll show you the gatefold. There's the gatefold for this record. And it's a good collection of songs. And yeah, it's the hits, but there's some uh, kind of nice deep album cuts, you know. And uh, like So Lonely is on here. That was never, as far as I know, that's, that's never been a single. Maybe it was in other countries. But I don't think it was ever a single here. Uh, this bed's too big without you. Uh... And of course the hits. <laughs> so I guess a couple, really. Um, it is such a great... This is just a good collection. And because I'm such a huge... Um, because I'm such a huge Stuart Copeland fan of the drums, to hear his drums sound so powerful in this half speed mastering mix is incredible. It is absolutely incredible. It sounds great. It sounded so thick coming out of my speakers. There's the label, the picture of the guys. And the back is just police logo. <clears throat> I'm a huge Copeland fan, like I said, and the mix is so fantastic. You hear every little detail of his drumming, the, the rudiments he does on the hi-hat, the quick snap he does on those splash cymbals, the, hitting the octopons. That crack on the snare that only sounds like him. <laughs> and of course, you know, Sting and Andy Summers, they sound good too. But <laughs> knowing me, I only focus on the drums. <laughs> and drums sound fantastic on this release. Uh, here's a label for the other one where they just, now, now it's a red label and same label there. Fantastic collection. Absolutely fantastic. It was a fun spin when I first brought this home and gave it a gave it a spin on the turntable, cranked it up nice and loud, and you know even though it's a two record set, I went through the whole thing. What felt and it felt like I was only listening to it for maybe twenty minutes. It went by that quick. That's how much I was enjoying myself. And. Um, yeah, I love this album. I, I love this collection. I'm, I wish I didn't wait so long to get it, but uh, oh well. Um, this is a, just a great collection. I'm a huge police fan, so that was a major score for me. Here's another major score for me. It's Howard Jones' new album, Dialogue. And I just got this today. <laughs> In fact, I just barely got done giving it its first spin. And I already knew I liked this album because I've had it on CD for a couple months now. And uh, they told me that the vinyl wouldn't ship for till, they actually said till February. So they actually got it to me really early, a whole month early. So that, that's kind of nice. There's a custom label. So I already knew I loved this album. And I do. Uh, because, like I said, I had it on CD for a couple of months. Let me see if I can find her. Uh, should have had this ready. Yeah, so here's the CD to Dialogue. <clears throat> and it's a two CD set where they have, you know, the regular studio album on one CD. And the other CD is the instrumental version of the album. So a very nice touch. Came with an autograph card of Howard Jones <clears throat> and this handy little box here we have uh, the instrumental version of dialogue 
There we go. And we have the regular studio version of Dialogue with the vocals. And, you know, a CD, a CD booklet <clears throat> that uh, came with the release. Just to give you an idea of the artwork. There we go. But anyway, back to the vinyl, because I'm supposed to be showing vinyl on this station. I mean, this channel, not CDs. But it's a great album, because it reminds me of uh, his first two solo records. It kind of has that 80s vibe to it that I really love. I mean, that's what I originally turned me on to, Howard Jones' music in the first place. And that's what this record is. It's, it's like a return to... Uh, a return to the 80s. I think I showed this already, but I'll show it one more time. Um, yeah, it, it does have that that feel of his and vibe of his first two albums, and that's why I love it so much. Uh, celebrate, celebrate it together. Great song. Uh, basically, all of side one is fantastic. Formed by the stars was, I think, is my favorite rec my favorite song on the record, but. I, I, <laughs> Uh, it changes every time I listen to this. I love the last song, I Believe in You. Such a great tune. So, always good to have new music from Howard Jones. I saw him in concert over the summer with Midjour from Ultravox uh, opening the show. And that was a great show, too. I came in thir third for my third favorite concert. <laughs> um... I had seen, this is my second time seeing Howard Jones in, in concert, and every time I see him, it's just a fantastic evening. And that evening was just so good. And uh, he is fun to see live. Uh, his, it's, just, it's just a fun time. He, he's so positive. Uh, what I like about Howard Jones and his music, it, it, it's all so positive <laughs> and optimistic and joyous. That's what I dig about his music. Plus, the keyboard playing is fantastic. And his arrangement, his ability to arrange these songs are, are, are so impressive. Uh, that's why I'm such a big fan of his music. And this, this record is a good example of all the things I love about his music. So, Howard Jones Dialogue. Finally on vinyl. It's <laughs> very big treat. So, since I brought up uh, Midger... I'll show a couple of Ultravox records. Um, we'll start with uh, Rage and Eden. Uh, I had the record store day release to this album. And when I was reading uh, all the credits in the back of the of the jacket, it said it, it they didn't include two songs from this record, which I believe was The Voice and I Remember, were the two songs they didn't include. So I thought, and I'd never owned this record before in any format. So, uh, I mean, this album in any format before. So I thought I'd just go back and look for a good used copy. <clears throat> and and I did just that. And this is this actually is a really good used copy. I mean, maybe the jacket has some wear on it, but the vinyl played very well. Just a standard American pressing of it. And... Uh, what I love about this record is when you when you put it on, and the vibe is they're going to be experimental. This is going to be un unlike anything you've ever heard before. <laughs> it's very very experimental, and I love it. Now, of course, everybody says you know the John Fox uh, era. I think I believe that's his name, John Fox <clears throat> era of the band was the best. I have not heard any of that music yet. I'll have to go on YouTube or something and dive in and just give a listen. And if I see some of their records out, I'll get them. Um, I'm still kind of new to this era of Ultravox. The only song I really known was Vienna and Dancing with Tears in My Eyes. It wasn't until I started digging into the vinyl, I realized there's more to them than just those two songs. Uh, they were pretty creative. And like I said, they weren't afraid to be experimentative in their music. And that's what I like about it. I mean, it's unusual and weird, but I do like unusual. And, I'm a big fan of unusual and weird, so very good. Very good. And I got one more from Ultravox. And that is the album uh, Quartet. There we are right there. Um, 
my favorite song on here so far i've only listened to this album a couple of times but i i really like the song him um h y m n him um I've always I, I I remember him singing it in concert when I saw him open for Howard Jones and it just brought the house down. Everybody just loved the way it sounded, and so did I. I just wasn't that familiar with the tune. Uh, same label. Uh, but this whole uh, I think I prefer this one over uh, Rage and Eden. Uh, but they're both great albums, and um, really, I'm digging what I hear from Ultravox. Um, makes me want to dig a little bit more into them or uh, give Midjour's solo albums and other side projects uh, more of a listen because that was good stuff very good stuff all right <laughs> and, and now you're gonna uh, you're gonna have to be patient with me because I'm gonna self-indulge in uh, my childhood I was born much raised on what is now considered old school R&B music. Uh, but that represents my childhood because I remember when all these songs were new and um, lately I've been wanting to buy the records of those great old songs that I remember. So I got two of them this last dig. The first one is from the Daz band, uh, Keep It Live, uh, mainly for the song uh, Whip, uh, Let It Whip. <laughs> which is a great classic R&B old school song, Let It Whip. I remember that song was new and everybody was playing it in this neighborhood. And they actually came to Stockton, the Daz band. They opened for Confunction. And uh, my brothers took me to Tower Records because they were doing an autograph session. Both bands were doing an autograph session uh, just hours before their concert in downtown Stockton. It's on the Motown label. <clears throat> so I got to meet members of the Daz Band and some members of Confunction. That was a nice experience <laughs> because you know, I was just a kid. I think I might have been only about 10 or 11 years old. And I heard their music, but I never knew what any of them looked like. I would just listen to their music, but I never really like dug into the record and to see the photo at least of the band and know what they looked like there's no photo of the band in this record and i think my brother had the cassette or something like that and so i never knew what these guys looked like so i had to kind of take their word that i was meeting the dance band even though i had no clue what the guys looked like <laughs> but they were all real cool dudes and uh they were happy to sign anything i brought up to them they ended up being real nice guys. The guys come from Confunction as well. All were nice guys, so that was a nice experience. The last old school record I'm going to show you is Shellamar. Can't remember the name of this one. Oh, Three for Love, Shellamar. And the songs I the song I remember the most about that is make the song Make That Move, which is on side two. Make That Move was a really cool song. Um, uh, and the song This Is For The Lover In You. Uh, but the whole, this whole album is actually pretty damn cool. <laughs> Some cool grooves on here. I mean, the slow song, the, a couple slow songs aren't bad. They get a little sappy sounding, but they're not bad. And, of course, this is the band Jody Watley was in before she became a solo pop star. <laughs> but before she did that, she was in Shalimar. And I think she was discovered because she was a Soul Train dancer. <laughs> and it is on the uh, Solar label, which stands for Sands, Sounds of Los Angeles Records. And I believe one of the people who owned it or managed this label was Don Cornelius, which was the, who was the host of the, the show uh, Soul Train. I used to watch Soul Train like every Saturday <laughs> on TV when I was growing up. That was one of my favorite shows. And then I'd go right from that to American Bandstand, which was a weird change in culture. But <laughs> I still remember this album. I still remember that song, Make That Move. It was one of those songs that got, was real popular and got played a lot in the, in the hood. <laughs> so listening to these old school R&B records really takes me back. Uh, like I said, I've been collecting a lot of them lately between them and Cool and Gang and Confunction. 
and Commodores. Uh, I almost bought a Barry White record. I might do that next time I go out. <clears throat> All right, let's move on. Let's now move on to the 80s, mid-80s. This is a 12-inch single box set from Bruce Springsteen from the uh, Born in the USA album. I have never seen this before. I did not know he marketed his 12-inch singles in this box set. Now, supposedly this came with a free poster, but the poster is not included in this as this is a used copy. So someone kept the poster but got rid of the, got rid of the records. So I'll open the box up, and we'll take a look. It came with a 45, though, um, an exclusive 45 for the song I'm Going Down. A song I actually, I like this song. It's a great song from Boo Springsteen, I'm Going Down. Always loved that song. And, um, <clears throat> and it is on the CBS label, as are the 12-inch singles, so... Really cool. Uh, the B side is um, Janie, don't you lose heart? Janie, don't you lose heart is a B side song. So cool that it came with a rare 45. So I'll show you the singles that are in, included in this. There's four of them. We'll start with a uh, 12 inch single version of Born in the USA with I'm on Fire as the B side really cool collection of songs um so uh on the a side we have the song i'm on fire 12 inch version of that and the song rosalita a live track i believe no it is a studio version and then we have the 12 inch on the b side we have the 12 inch version of born in the usa the freedom mix which is actually kind of ridiculous <laughs> And the last song on here is Johnny Bye Bye, previously unavailable. And like I said, these are all on the CBS label. So, uh, pretty cool. I love the song I'm on Fire. And I do like Born in the USA, too. I think Born in the USA is a great song. I just don't... The 12-inch uh, single mix, the Freedom mix, gets a little ridiculous. <laughs> but... Still a good song. Still a very good song. Uh, the next one is for Glory Days. I actually had this on a 7-inch single, but this is the 12-inch version of it. So, really cool there. So, on side A, we have the song Glory Days. Uh, and this is actually the, the, the album version. And the song Stand On It, previously unavailable. On the B side, we have uh, Sherry Darling and racing in the streets. So, pretty cool. Same label as the last one, CBS. But it's cool to see this on a 12 inch. Like I said, I have, for years I've had this on a seven inch single with that artwork, so it's cool to see. Moving up, probably my favorite song on this album, uh, Born in the USA, is Cover Me. And we have the 12 inch single for Cover Me. So cool to have this. So cool to have this. Uh, so on the uh, A side, the undercover mix of Cover Me and the dub mix of Cover Me and the song Sh uh, Shut Out the Light. And B side, we have Dancing in the Dark, the dub mix, and a live version of the song Jersey Girl. So very nice. Again, same label. Very cool. <clears throat> last one. The very last one is Dancing in the Dark. And I've seen this 7-inch all over the place. I don't know if I have it on 7-inch, but I've seen it almost every time I go digging. <clears throat> Not the biggest fan of Dancing in the Dark, I have to admit. It's an okay song. I don't, I don't hate it, but if it comes on the radio, I'm most likely changing the station. <laughs> but I like having it on this, on this collection. Uh, I do believe it's the extended version of... Um, Dancing in the Dark, though I didn't really remember hearing a difference. And then the B-side is Pink Cadillac, classic song from Bruce Springsteen. So, some nice 12-inch singles. I love this collection. Uh, I love the fact that they designed this uh, special box set just for the 12-inch singles from that album. And they included this really cool 45. 
It's a great collection, and I felt very lucky to find it. Like I said, I've never seen it before, so I was pretty stunned when I saw this. All right, I'm going to just show two 45s real fast because these two 45s I've never seen in this area, so I had to buy them. One is from Marillion, and it's for the Heart of Lothian from um, a Misplaced Childhood album. I almost forgot the name of the damn album. <clears throat> great song from great song from uh, Marillion. One of my favorites from that album. And it is on the black label from Marillion. The black EMI label. And let me just make sure. I got, oh, on the B-side is the song Chelsea Monday. That's the B-side song. And here we are. Here is the B-side. Like I said, Chelsea Monday is the B-side song. <clears throat> I love Heart of Lothian. Uh, sounds good on this 45. I keep trying to collect as many uh, Marillion singles as I can find, <laughs> and uh, it's always it always gives me such a thrill to to um, actually score one. This one's from um, Simple Minds, uh, Glittering Prize. This single is pretty hard to find in this neck of the woods. I do. I never see this one out there, so that's, of course, why I had to pick it up. Um, on the A side, of course, of the song, uh, Glittering Prize. B side, Glittering Prize theme. More or less an instrumental. And custom label, too, which looks really nice. Really like that. Looks really cool. Same thing on the B side. <clears throat> yeah, I don't, um, the usual stuff I run around here is Don't You Forget About Me or Alive and Kicking. I see tons of those 45s, but never this one, Glittering Prize. And um, so naturally I'm going to be buying that, no questions asked. Well, that's going to do it, folks. That is the vinyl haul for the first, the first vinyl haul of this year. Um, glad to have you with me on it. Uh, leave me some comments as always so we can uh, get a little chatter going love I always love hearing from you guys and I will respond so hope everyone's doing great out there and see you next time around